who helps IT consultants to dramatically improve the business side of their business. Now you can normally find Carl in Sacramento in California, but today you join us from Arizona, uh, site of Autotask Community Live. How are you doing, Carl? Very good. Very hot. Very hot in Arizona, let me tell you. I, I, I think it's 38 Celsius, more or less. That sound about right? 100 degrees Fahrenheit? So, and that's at 8 to 9 o'clock in the morning, so. Wow, very hot. <laughs> <laughs> So, how is Autotask Community Live? You're in your second second day of the event there, is that right? Second full day. There was a, a they do the draining boot camp the day before. Okay. A number of people went out golfing at 110 degrees. <laughs> uh, I did not, I assure you. Uh, so, so yesterday uh, kicked off really, really great uh, keynote by Mark Catini, uh, who is the CIO. And I'm assuming that will be broadcast at some point if it's not available already. And he showed some really, really great new uh, metrics that you can get right out of Autotask, built, absolutely built into the interface. And one of the cool things they did, which is it's a brilliant move in my opinion, <clears throat> is that for everybody who's registered for this conference, they preloaded the database with these metrics so that they've got that tool ready to go. And all you have to do is literally go by the Autotask booth and say, show me my stuff. And they, they demo this new program, this new module, with your live data out of your Autotask. So is it, I thought that was a very cool idea. Is it it's an add-on or is this is new features they're 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 boasting and giving everyone? My understanding is it's new features, so, so that everybody it, that's that yeah. uses Autotask will have that. That that's my understanding. I can't guarantee that, but um, you know, since people make people make a living selling programs to get good data out of PSA tools, out of you know both of the major PSA tools, um, this sort of helps you ha have to avoid buying these tools from somebody else. Did did they buy somebody? somebody's no, no. product or they hire somebody or they just finally no, they, went and did it themselves? Yeah, they did it themselves. So, and uh, so it was, anyway, it's very cool because they have an entire screen that is, you know, nine different ways of looking at your backlog. Like how many tickets come in on an average day and it's all graphed, you know, and, uh, and how many tickets get closed every day and how many P1s and how many P2s. And so, you know, every visual representation you can imagine so that, you know, however your brain works, you go, oh, that one makes sense to me. <laughs> you, know, you got the graph of your choice. Very, Very cool. Nice. And, and that's been made available to people at Autotask Community Live this week. Yes. Yeah. So if you're here, now I don't know if it's if it's uh, live from, for them from now on or if it's just like today we're showing you this and then when it's released you'll know what it looks like. So it is not in general release, it's my understanding. But okay. they did show it live on the screen, so it wasn't uh, wasn't just PowerPoints. So what it, it seems as though there's the theme at Community Life this year around metrics, uh, metrics that matter to MSPs. And Autotask did that um, that really cool ebook um, a few weeks ago uh, that they gave away for free, where they um, did a survey of IT solution providers and MSPs, um, and allowed you to sort of almost to benchmark yourself against um, you right. know what what other MSPs are doing. So is that the theme, the unofficial theme for Community Live this year, Carl? Well, I, I, you know, it's funny because what Mark talked about in the keynote was sort of uh, there, there's three big things going on in our business. One is obviously the cloud. Another is obviously uh, devices, mobile devices and apps. Uh, and the third is big data. So that, that metric piece was, okay, how do we get the big data out of Autotask? Because we know we have all this juicy stuff on all of our clients and how many tickets. And, and Autotask has the ability to look at a very macro level at all of the tickets, you know, all of the numbers and the metrics for all of the users all over the world in 70 countries and see who uses this module and that module and how many tickets and, and I didn't write down all the information but I took some screenshots. You know, there are so many millions of tickets, you know, during the, uh, during the morning session, you know, he said there were something like 7 million tickets added to the system, like holy smokes. <laughs> So well, I assume that they're also including their own metrics for their service delivery, aside of their business. 
but they they have the same problem that everybody else does, and I'm not. I mean, I'm not throwing rocks at this thing, but I, the first thing I occurs to me is they're going to have the same problem every other MSP that we coach has, which is, but have I properly categorized the tickets as to what type of work it is, etc., right. so that this data is of use to me to say, on average, how long does it take to fix a virus on a machine? The answer is, well, here's some numbers, but I don't know how focused they are because they didn't tag that ticket. They didn't have a clear definition or they didn't use a template or they didn't tag the yeah, ticket. So, but that it's this type I, of work. And, I agree that's, that's, a, that's something you have to be very aware of. On the other hand, once the tool exists, now you can go create tickets and tools and, and tag them in such a way so that you get the data back out. You know, right. it's the, the classic old garbage in, garbage out. If you don't put it in, you can't get it out. Right. But if, yeah, and I agree, the metric, I, I have no problem saying this, this is what drives when you put in tickets, what a quality ticket looks like is it, you have selected the proper category for it. If you don't have the categories, go build them or put them in place. And yeah, that's cool. So, so what else has been happening in uh, Community Live uh, there, Carl? We've had a bit of golf. It's been too hot. <laughs> We've been talking metrics. So um, I don't want to necessarily like start any rumors, but uh, there are pictures of some people with a donkey from last night's party. So Wait, wait, wait. So there's a, an IT industry conference and people are partying? <laughs> yes, I know. It's very strange. So wait a minute. So here's if, if you know Travis Austin, I got a, you know, I, I got a picture of Travis Austin with a donkey. So <laughs> let's just say it was a wild party. You know, we're we're close to Mexico. So, <laughs> but so the um, a lot of vendors here, um, uh, and you know, as always, one of the things that happens is that the vendors, you know, the other providers who do antivirus and spam filtering and whatever. They love these events. They love PSA conferences more than most conferences because everybody here, or 90% of the people here, 98% of the people here, already have a tool, and they only drop by your booth if they're looking to switch, right? So if you're at another conference and it's all very general, you walk into a booth, the person who's hawking whatever, spam filtering is going to say, Oh, you should try this. Here are the advantages of spam filtering. Here are the, the things you can do. At this conference, you come into the booth and they're like, okay, so tell me why you're dissatisfied with Postini you know, and having Google index your entire you know, database. Uh, and so they, they really love this conference for that because the, the people have, most people have already got a set of tools. And so they're, they're familiar with why you need tools and they don't have to be sold on that piece of it. And how are you finding the makeup of the attendees at Community Live this year, Carl? Because I attended Autotask Community Live last year um, over in Orlando, Florida, and I wasn't the only Brit there. There was a number of Brits came across. Um, this year, of course, the big news was that Autotask Community Live has, has grown to such a degree that it's going to be in two locations, right. Arizona and Barcelona, Spain. Now, uh, I had a personal commitment, so I, I'm, I'm not in Arizona, um, but I just wondered how many other Brits have, have made the trip across or how many other people from outside uh, um, Europe have made the trip. There's quite a few. I mean, you know Lee Evans and, and Gareth. Uh, so there, there's a number of, of Brits. There's a handful of people from other countries as well. So, you know, obviously there's always a large Australian contingent. So, um, you know, it's, I think it's, it seems to be as international as it ever has been. Um, and, and so that's kind of nice. It is a good sized crowd, you know, this is, you know, every facility is different. So this facility, the conference, the main room is super wide. So nobody's very far from the stage, but it gives you a, a less of a sense of how big the crowd is, right? Cause you, you can't see the whole crowd at one time. Um, but, uh, but it's, it's big. I don't know what their attendance is, but I'm, I don't think they're kidding when they said it was sold out. Yeah. I that's can, good. Well, I can well believe it. And, and in terms of the uh, the breakout sessions, um, uh, what what's the content there? What's uh, you know we we talked about MSP metrics as a theme, but is the is the training sessions and other speakers going on there? Yeah, well, there it's very good. So it's it's interesting. I don't know how uh, everybody decided that Rayan is the uh, Rayan Bucianico is the person to know about uh, uh, numbers and and uh, keeping track of your your. Uh, books, but uh, she's got two sessions here just as she does with my conference later in the month. So, so she's doing the, the, um, 
the QuickBooks side of things and how do you keep track of all that. Uh, and of course, Autotask always does trainings on like, oh, here's how to use this module. Here's how to get the most out of, out of that module. And so, you know, that, that kind of stuff is going on with a lot of emphasis on, you know, some of the newer things that they're going to be releasing. And I can't remember the number, but I think they released 40 new features yesterday. So you gotta, if, you're, if, you're, if you're an Autotask subscriber and you haven't like logged in and poked around, uh, you should be doing that you know, here in the next week just to see what's what. Oh, and what about the mixture? Is, is, um, is it uh, long-standing Autotask users there? Is there new users there? Is it a mixture of the two? Um, actually, a real good mixture. I'm shocked at how many people I've talked to that this is their first conference and they've been using Autotask for five years. So um, it, it is interesting. And one of the... One of the unnamed Autotask employees told me that um, it's pretty common that people will go to this conference two or three times and then take a few years off. And uh, it just because at some point you you can only take so much education and then you got to go implement it. And if you don't implement it, there's no point in coming back. <laughs> so where, where I believe that, you know, there's a lot of benefit to be had with meeting people, you know, who are, are using the same tool and... So, you know, somebody you can rely on the other 12 months or the other 11 and a half months out of the year. Yeah, I, I'm going to be intrigued with, of course, Autotask have had really explosive growth here in the UK. Um, so then numbers have gone up and up. And I know the, the Autotask offices in the UK have grown, you know, they've moved offices three times to accommodate new people. So I'm going to be really interested to be in Barcelona. I suspect there's going to be a huge amount of people who, um, you know, that their very first Autotask community live. So that'll be interesting. I think they have six offices now, like US, China, you know, so... Well, that, I mean, that's good. I, I'd be curious to see how many they are expecting for Barcelona. Do you have any idea on that, Richard? Oh, I have no idea. But I, mo most, most people that I've spoken to, because we mentioned my friends uh, uh, Lee Evans and Gareth Brown, a couple of the Brits are across there. There's a number of other people who attended Autotask Community Live in the States last year that said they would definitely go again this year. But then when the announcement was made uh, about the date in Barcelona, I think most people from Europe and the UK are, you know, their preference, of course, would be to go there rather than fly 100 million hours or, or whatever it is to uh, somewhere really warm. So, uh, yeah, it keeps down the costs and it's it's a, it's a shorter trip because it's a it is a big investment of, of uh, not just money but time out of the office as well so much more if you're flying across the world for it so so not really sure how many numbers but I'd expect it to be I would expect it to be sold out as well I'd imagine so let, let's change tack a little bit if we can Jen so the the reason we were getting here today um, partly because uh, Autotask Community Live is going on but us three we had a we had a really uh, strong conversation a few weeks ago uh, talking about making money and saving money by using a PSA tool which of course led to this conversation here today so let, let's change tack a bit but let's let's link it into Autotask Community Live so we're talking a little bit about metrics and um, how that's important to a business now Manny you and I spoke about um, how to get those metrics and how to get accurate data into the system in the first place so I'd like to kick things off if I can Manny by asking asking you the question Lots of people who have adopted Autotask or a PSA solution. The first question is, how do I get my engineers to log time accurately? <laughs> and I can see Carl smiling there, but if I can, can I turn to you and get your thoughts on this? I know it's something you're very passionate about. <laughs> well, right, and yeah. So the, the hardest thing to do is to get everybody to log time in real time. And I've made it a point, um, starting with Carl's company eight years ago now, when he said we're going to go to a PSA tool, I learned from that experience the one most important thing, which was just very simple. You create the process by which everybody's going to follow to log time in real time, and you set the, uh, the precedence that we're going to do this, and you set a date, and then you say from now on, from this day forward, you'll have no gaps, no overlaps, no duplicate entries, and every time entry is going to be a quality entry. And you do have to do the groundwork ahead of time and say, here's the tool, here's how you use it, this is how you log time, this is what we expect. You know, write up a procedure. But when you draw that line, um, what we did was, or what I did for Carl was, I said, okay, I'm just, you know, we talked about it. He said, all I care is that you get every, all the time in there. And so I reviewed time cards every day 
and sent emails. And instead of going and doing the fix-up of time for them, the engineers and the techs, I'd send them an email, and basically, in very short order, we made a transition. It was a small team. And I learned a lot from that because every company that I've worked for since and every company I've worked with since, whether it's, and it doesn't matter if it's ConnectWise or Autotask, the one thing that's universal is time is your widget. And so you have to treat it like it's the most important thing. And, you know, whether you're selling lemons or pizzas, basically, this is product just moving out the side door. So you have to make sure everybody's clear on that. You get everybody to buy in on it. You set up the procedure. You set a deadline. And then... You, and then that's it. You never look back. Basically, the service coordinator will look at time cards maybe on a daily basis to see that just a quick scan, there's no gaps, no duplicate entries, no overlaps. Service manager checks at the end of the week or however often to do billing to see that it's a quality time entry, that it's set right for billable or not billable. But once that process is there, as I put it, the new technicians or engineers or anybody else, when they show up, they won't know that you did it any other way. You know, and, and that to me is the best, absolute best way to just basically draw a line in the sand, make sure you have a, a well-written process, and then, and then go. Well, and you know, the reason I was smiling is because this is the thing that, that we see again and again and again within our own company. It took us, uh, you know, some effort, but not a huge amount of time to get everybody on board. <clears throat> But I talk to people who say, oh, you know, our goal is to get people to put in, you know, six to eight hours of their time every day. I'm like, stop it. Like, why isn't your goal to either you either put in your time or you don't put in your time? What's the point of putting in six hours a day? And, and one of the things that um, Manny did not mention is that we set people's pay based on the hours that are in the PSA. Oh, yeah, huge. That yes. is a time card, right? So... You know what? You put in six hours a day. By gosh, I'm going to pay you for six hours a day. We're good to go, <laughs> right? You want to get paid for eight hours a day? Well, then you're going to put eight hours a day because because even if you're not working on a ticket, if it's internal, you're in a meeting, whatever. I still want that time allocated because if you don't put it in the system, then I don't know whether you were running an errand to the bank, doing something personal, or working on a client's machine for something billable. I also don't know if you were working on a client's machine. I don't have the notes for it. I don't know what you did and didn't do, right? I don't know where that stands or whether there's still a virus. I, I don't know anything because there's nothing in the system. Yeah, and so as Carl was saying about um, making it, tying their, their uh, pay to the time. Now, so let's say you have someone who's on salary. And at the end of the day, you can have all the kinds of different conversations with people, whether they're on hourly or salary. But it is true, right? We we started out and said, well, from now on, we're going to just do all time cards in, in the PSA. So that makes that just literally eliminates all conversations about that. Then the next thing that, like one of the golden rules of time entry is that you have to account for all time from the beginning of the business day to the end of the business day. Again, with no gaps, no overlaps, no duplicate entries. And by doing that, basically you impress upon the engineers in the text that, look, if if you work a, a morning shift, an afternoon shift, or an evening shift, let's say it's a big company and you do help desk and, and you have field service techs, it doesn't matter. You're responsible for a core of hours that you're supposed to work, and the idea is that from the time you're supposed to clock in to the time you leave, you basically you have to account for that eight hours, whether it's travel time, sick time, vacation time. Because one of the things that we also came up with was, I mean, we've, I mean, we've got this down to a science. Well, one of the other things we came up with is if there's time missing, I don't know if you took lunch, went on break, went to the doctor, forgot to uh, log time for a client, or got in a car accident. I have no idea. And it's really cool if you've got everybody working in real time because the service coordinator or service manager, I, I would the term I use is they can actually go look in the system and see where you are. They just go literally go look at your time card and the last time entry you had is driving from ABC company to XYZ company and then it says lunch break it's fair to assume if you go look at the schedule they're at that call that they're scheduled to be at at two o'clock nothing to it you know and it literally it, it's kinda like it is the key thing that will straighten out so many other service delivery problems for a team by just mandating that you work in real time you know, including one of the most important, which is if a client calls, and this is like probably one of the biggest problems, a client calls and says, Joe was just here, he fixed this thing, 
and he left, and it's not working again. And anybody on the team, if they're working in real time, can go in to the PSA and find Joe's notes. And Joe's notes say, I flipped a switch here, I changed this from that, I did this, I plugged this in, I tested it, client signed off on it, I left. But if that time entry is not there, you have to sit here and tell the client, well, we did some work for you, but we have no idea what Joe did, and Joe's at lunch, or Joe just left for the end of the week because he's going on vacation for a month, and and you can't, you have nothing to do. And that kind of, in a sense, to me, that's irresponsible. I wouldn't, if my tech people t took care of me that way, I probably would find different tech people, you know. So it it's powerful in what it mandates as far as all the other things falling in line of wh how you would run want to run a service delivery system. And yeah, it makes you look a bit of a fool, actually, doesn't it? If a client phones up and says, "Hey, uh, Joe's just left site, and um, yeah, it's still not working. Oh, let me give Joe a call. I can't get through to Joe. Joe's turned his phone off because he's gone to lunch." I know I've been there with you know my MSP in the past. It does make you look a fool. So let me move this along and let me ask the question now that uh, the those MSPs who are watching us live and watching this video afterwards are screaming out and they're saying, "That's all well and good, Manny." But I can't get my engineers to do this. What's your answer to that? Uh, well, the truth is, then you get different engineers. And, I, right. and, and a lot of people say, well, wait a minute, I can't do that. Well, actually, you can. But really, you start back where you, you introduce the tool, you write a nice process, you indoctrinate everybody that this is where we're going to go, and you draw a line in the sand. And then it's just part of your job. It's, it, it, I mean... If this is our widget, and your job as an engineer to go fix things and log time so we can build a client, whether it's break, fix, or manage services, it doesn't change that that's just an integral part of your job from this day forward. And we live in a, our, our, we're in a technology-based society now, and it's so second nature, it just, it just shouldn't be a problem. And the truth is, I've only had a few clients or uh, coaching clients that had engineers that had an issue with logging time like that and at the end of the day they left the company one way or the other because yeah. you you know if, if your people process is to say look you know Tom we need you to do this and this is something that's important to the company and they understand it and they can do it and they're capable of it because everyone else is and they just don't want to comply you've got a whole different issue on your hands but I I would say it's maybe one two people out of 40 you know that I can think of in the recent couple of years that didn't really just were not willing to do it or couldn't do it because they couldn't wrap their head around it but this again is where the process comes in is you set the engineer free and you say someone like myself 10 15 years ago who I always believed I could just put in the hours in the middle of the night and get it done and take care of it and I don't want to log my time even myself can be I can be retrained anybody like me who's still in the industry doing that it forces you to do as Carl always says, my favorite saying from Carl is, slow down and get more done, right? The number one, I have a thing called the, the eight golden rules of PSA that I give to my clients. It's one of my sheets. Number one rule is, all work is done against a ticket. Number two, one issue, one ticket. And number three, everything we can do remotely, we do ro remotely. Fourth, we always work in real time. So when you these are the leading things that I was saying about indoctrinating and making sure everybody's clear on the process the, and every technician I've ever presented this to they went wow this is great this is this makes sense and it's logical so really having it's really gonna be a rare thing to have somebody who just says there's no way that you can prove to me that that's more efficient than doing it my way and my answer to that is simply well I can actually prove it I can show you percentages and efficiency numbers based on all your time being logged but you not logging time and not tracking it, you haven't got nothing. So, you know, you know, but uh, I know that's kind of a long answer, but that's, that's really what it boils down to. No, I, th I think I think you're spot on with it. In, in my experience as well, if you've if you've got an engineer who um, has been told that hey, this is the way we're doing things now. We're logging time for these reasons. The company needs to make money. We need to keep track of it, and they still don't do it. Actually, in my experience, it opens up a whole different can of worms is how many other processes is the engineer 
not following as well and if you track through how many other um, maybe hidden away uh, disasters waiting to happen uh, are sitting there so Carl if I can turn to you for a minute I know you're just as passionate as uh, Manuel on this subject so in terms of the process and the, uh, and the people what are your thoughts on it is it easier to uh, bring somebody new into the business or, or should it be uh, just as easy or uh, just as as um, uh, as, as uh, a good way of doing things to, to put a process in place and to get everybody to comply with it? Well, it's sort of interesting because if somebody's new, I think it is easier because there's only one way that we do things. This is the way we do things. They don't, they don't know that there's an option to not, you know, put their time in or not use the, the, the correct terminology or construction of a, a ticket. But it's also very easy if you have employees who are actually excited about their job and enjoy what they're doing, there might be some resistance at first because they're like, oh, I'm, you know, you got to get your head around, <clears throat> you know, you're, you're taking away my freedom and, and some people might even have the attitude of um, <clears throat> that, oh, you're, you're micromanaging me. You want me to put every minute of my day in the system. Well, no, it's not that I'm micromanaging you, but it's, it's that I need this information for many other things in the job. And once once you sort of have this first wave, it's, it's sort of a two-step process for current employees. The first wave is get them to do it, get them to see it. And then you it's your job as the owner to reflect back to them, okay, here's how many tickets we put in last week, here's how many hours we put in, here's what the backlog looked like, is it going up, is it going down? You have to get back to the metrics that we started with and show them what you can do with the system once you have this information. You can also run reports and say, look, this client is not profitable, right? Everybody thinks, oh, that's our best client. Well, your best client doesn't make any money for you because, you know, you, you spend so many hours working on their stuff and, you know, they're only bringing in $1,000 a month. You need to give your time to somebody who's bringing in a lot more money. So once they see that, at some point, it, they catch fire because they're like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe how great the system is. And now they're excited about going ahead and um, putting their time in and following all the rules because they see that it actually does improve everything they're doing. I will say to, to the, the, the question about what you do with people who don't want to participate is, you know, in line with what you guys said, I have two posters made for my office. One says, slow down, get more done. Uh, the other one has got a little triangle, and then the, the base of the triangle is the word process. We can create the process. Once that's in place, the, the other two sides of the triangle, one is can do, so we, we buy um, employees who can do the job. We only hire people who we know are competent. So then the volume of your success is determined by the length of the third uh, side of the triangle, and that is will do. And if you have people who, who, where the will do is very small, your success is going to be very small. But if you have people where the will do is very large, your success can be extremely large because if the process is stable and the, and the can do is in place, then the only thing that's a variable is well, whether they will do what you're paying them to do. And the, the only other thing I think we haven't mentioned about why people don't put in their time is that some people are like, oh, it takes too much time. It's, you know, I, I need to go to the next client and the next client and the next client. And you just have to tell them, look, there's nothing more important than having this time in the system. The ticketing system is the heartbeat of the entire organization. And if the, if the time is not in there, I literally have no idea what happened in my own company today. So you, you absolutely have to do it. And, you know, anyway, you're right. I could go on forever, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's a great subject to talk on. Uh, something that, that springs to mind straight away, of course, and I'll, I'll turn to you, uh, Manuel, to get your thoughts on it next. Traditionally, um, it, it's fair to say that uh, IT companies are probably built or created by people who are technicians themselves and grow from there. Adjusting to becoming a business owner and leading by example can be a challenge for, you know, for, for the best of us in the industry, the best people in the industry. It's my experience, or it's, I think it's probably true to say as well, that the leader of the business does need to lead by example, especially when it comes to logging their own time. So the amount of business owners that I've spoken to uh, doing MSP coaching, and they're saying, oh, I'm having a challenge, Richard, get my engineers to log time. And I say, well, do you log your time? 
And they go, well, no, because I'm not really, a, I'm not part of service delivery. <laughs> Most of it, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so Manuel, any thoughts on um, uh, how to, um, to lead by example, how to be transparent about the amount of time that's in the system? And I think going back to what Carl was saying, explaining to people why it's important that the time is logged in the system and how, how it can be used to make the company profitable or not. Well, so it depends on the role. Now, the, it's, a, it's interesting because let's say you take a little one-man shop who's trying to do this, and he's going to go log his time. He's just got to re-indoctrinate himself and, and train himself these tricks. And you get a little bit bigger company, and you don't have a service manager, but let's say the next, the next logical iteration is you have three techs. Somebody kind of has to do what we call a mini service coordinator role or service coordinator type role. And that person's got a duality where they do some tech work and they do some service coordination. But even their service coordination is admin time, and it still gets logged, and it still gets done in real time. And I'm not kidding you. If, if I re-listen to this audio, and I'm going to come up with 75 subjects for different blogs, and they're all around the same thing, which is time is your widget, and you, like Carl says, we've talked about it, all of these wonderful metrics, Autotask or ConnectWise or any other uh, company wants to get out, don't come out unless you've put time, these, these entries in. It's the core of so many things. Your finances, your cash flow, your metrics, your, your efficiency, it's just everything. But, and then going back to the, to the model, as your model gets larger, then you have a service manager, a service coordinator, and then pretty soon you have multiple teams. It's, it's true all the way around. Even the admin time gets logged. When I was doing service management, I would log my admin time, and there would just be a little spots of a tech call here or there, but it's still all basically there. And what you do is, uh, regardless of the PSA, you can set a, um, all of them have the ability to set what you expect your, um, I guess, workload or efficiency or, or amount of billable hours for a, a person. And I would tell people that if we watch the metrics and we track this, you're going to see that a field engineer right now is going to be about 75% efficient. Help desk guy is going to be about 90 to 95 percent efficient because they don't drive anywhere, they don't get, they don't go anywhere. They just do one call after the other and minimal admin time for a meeting at the beginning of the week. Service coordinator could end up being 60/40 because they spend 40 percent or even 60 percent of their time doing admin stuff. And each person in the in the team will find a signature what their efficiency and the number of billable hours are. And all of a sudden, you can do workload reports. And, and projections and know when the next time you get a new technician is and you can even turn it around and look at a client like Carl's saying and say well I have a client who's there there we're really burning money well let's go drill down and look at how we're losing money it seems that we always spend so much time on these particular types of calls you can't know that you can't get any of that information if it doesn't start you know with the time entries and people putting in their time in real time and, and measuring it but um, you know the and it has to be. It has to be the owners. And if you're a one-man shop, you just got to go have the discipline to say, I will account for all of my time from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. No gaps, no overlaps, no duplicate entries. And then see how your finances change. 30 days of doing that, and it would, you would be amazed at what your, you know, your, your income and your cash flow and, and everything, would how it would be altered. So, so two things that spring to mind um, while we're talking about that, and especially when it's the business owner themselves trying to get the time into the system. Uh, the, the first one that I recommend to people is um, to actually create internal tickets for, for tasks that you're doing. So not client-facing tickets, but internal tickets. So if you're spending your time working on the company website, if you're spending your time working on marketing, if as a business owner you're spending time going out prospecting, create internal tickets and log the time there. It gets you into the habit that time is being logged to something within the system, and so there's there's not these yeah. gaping holes where you can say, ah, it was on admin. That was I don't need to log time today, seven and a half hours on admin. The second one is to make it more transparent, I think, um, have some sort of dashboard or some sort of way of, of uh, demonstrating the real-time uh, numbers that people are logging because nothing is more persuasive than the engineer sitting in a room and uh, you as the business owner come through and say, hey, have you been logging your time properly? They point to the board and say, absolutely, we've all logged our time. Have you logged your time properly? <laughs> and your own numbers right down there. So uh, two techniques that I found uh, that have found been quite useful for people. The, so, uh, uh, interesting thing about yeah. the owner, you know, on the, on the question of the owner putting in time is, and I'm as guilty of this as any other owner, is that when, when I was putting in 
time, I would be more lax on myself than I was on other people because I know what my time is. But that doesn't help at the end of the month when I say, okay, how much time was spent creating um, uh, proposals, right? Because sometimes you get into these discussions with other uh, IT pros about, well, do you, do you give away the proposal and the, the, you know, design for free or do you charge for that? And, you know, for me, if it's a straightforward job, a, a new computer, whatever, uh, all right, I don't, I don't charge for putting together a quote. If it's a really complicated job, I need to know, you know, if I'm going to put seven or eight hours into a quote, I need to get paid for that, you know. So, but how do you know unless you put your time into the system that I, this was the sales lead, this was the amount of time I put into the sales process in order to get something done. And now I know when a project gets to a certain level, how much time it takes me to quote out that system. So whether I charge them separately for it or build it into the project, at least I know what that number is. Um, so it, it really is a good habit, even if even if you're uh, the boss. <laughs> Everybody should log your time, not just the tech time, but the sales time and, and the admin time as well. Right. So Carl and I, again, you know, for people that don't know, we, we go way back as far as working together since 2000 and... We go back to when Manny was born. 2004, <laughs> right? And when Carl said we're going to implement a, a PSA tool and describe what it was, I said, not a problem. We're going to make that work for you. And we devise these rules. And I'm telling you, rule number one, golden rule number one is all work is done against a ticket. And it does not matter who you are. And we had came up to this. We had long conversations about, but, you know, should I be tracking time for a project? And I would always say, and what we ended up coming up with and agreeing on was that, if you track the time, if it ever flips over to where they say, hey, you know what, we want you to just do the whole thing and we want to bring you on as a consultant, you know how many hours you've already got invested or, you know, you could even go to the point where you say, look, we quoted this whole thing to you. We could just hand you the entire plans for this and you pay us our consulting time, which is we got four and a half hours on it. But if you didn't track that and you don't know that, it not only means you can't charge them for you, I mean, you can ballpark it, but by the same token, you want to build a history where you have repeatability and reproducibility in what you do as an MSP. And how do you do that? Again, you go back to how much time does it take us to do something? What is our average? What is our best to beat? And if it's a project, if you log the amount of time it took you just to design it, you can say, I mean, this is how when we wrote the book on Network Migration Workbook, Carl, you know, he does the front side, the quoting and all that. And what we came up with was we got it so repetitious and so repeatable and reproducible he would say, look, it's basically it's a half hour per desktop and this much per server and this much for the build. And we knew that after years of doing it, recording our time meticulously, and then we could go do it. Now, when we ran a project, we still logged all of our time so that when we do our retrospective, we know whether we made money, lost money, and we could go examine to the, to the minute, to the hour, where, where we messed up. A technician was leaking time or we messed up on the process. You know, it's, like I said, it's, you know, there's just so much to it, but it all starts with every minute, you know, being logged. It's so important, isn't it? And I think I, I, an example springs to mind the other day. I was speaking to an MSP coaching client of mine, and they asked me the question, um, should we be implementing quote works, the, the quoting tool? I said, well, how much time do you spend on quoting at the moment? Um, I think <laughs> we only spend, let's pluck a figure out there. I think we only spend an hour a week doing it said, okay, let's multiply that by five. It's probably five hours a week. No, no, right. no, it's not that much. The reality is if you're recording the amount of time, you're not, it's not based on gut feeling anymore. You're making a facts-based decision. Do I need quote works? Well, quote works tell me they're going to save me, you know, 50% of my time on, on quoting. So that's going to save us two and a half hours a week. Two and a half hours a week equals this much money. Quote work costs this much money. We're going to make a saving or not with it. Um, and there's so many examples of that where if you're recording things, I, I think what it boils down to is the old phrase, what can be measured can be managed. You know, right. once you've got the figures, you can actually look at things and make a fact-based decision. So... Uh, Carl, in your opinion, what, what else are the, uh, the biggest areas for, for wins by using a PSA tool and recording your time? Well, I'd say the, the next, for me, the next biggest area is the ability to communicate, and I don't want to say perfectly, but communicate at a much higher level. And, and I'll give you a very good example. Recently, you know, I work with Mike at America's Tech Support, and so he was out of town, and I'm, I need to, like, 
build a machine, right? So we, we got two machines for, for different clients. And I'm like, okay, so which, right, which is which, you know, because one, one was a specific kind of uh, computer, another one was a completely different kind of computer. I don't know which one went to which client. But processes make life easy. We use a system where the, the and many will remember this, the purchase order includes a code that tells us which client it goes to. So all I got to do is look at the label from Cynix and oh, it, it, it says this. Okay, so I know it goes to that client. And then we get into the system and, you know, I log in that I did this, 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 you know, uh, hooked up the, uh, the RMM tool and left it on the bench, turned on. Now Mike can come in remotely and he can finish the process, but he knows exactly what was done and what was not done. Right? There's no question about where we got to in, in the checklist because it's in the ticket. And, you know, it's exactly the kind of thing that whether you're working with an outsourced IT company where, you know, you're getting help from somebody in another city or another country or you're getting uh, just your own technicians where one's working in the morning and one's in the afternoon, uh, the ability to keep everything in that ticket so that when people pick it up, they know exactly where they are. They know what's been done, what's not been done. Uh, we have... Uh, a little uh, habit that we get into which is unless you're closing a ticket at the bottom you put is witness what is the next step and and some people know like okay so the next thing is I got the antivirus in so next we need to install Microsoft Office but I gotta move on so I'm I'm leaving the ticket now putting it back into the uh, schedule this category um, but the next person who opens it they don't have to fish around they know the absolute next thing is to install Microsoft Office and so that kind of communication is huge for um, you know managing your team and managing a project so that you don't waste a lot of time for everybody who opens a ticket has to get up to speed you know you you make that getting up to speed much easier yeah. the you know the the thing about the Wittens is powerful because we talk about a lot of people forget there are some clients out there who actually look in the portal of your PSA tool to see what the status of things you know, are. And what we would always do is we would always try and target a, what we call a, a client technical contact. And so one of the clients we had, they would go into the portal. I mean, it, it didn't take that long. I mean, it only took six or eight months, maybe a year to train them. They would go into the portal and they would actually look at a ticket to see what the status and what was going on with it before they called us. And if they understood it, they see that there was a time entry today, you know, by Nico that said, this is what's going on and this is what's next. What other than saying, hey, can you get that expediated because I need that by the end of the day, it's fairly re reasonable to assume that if the next step is deliver on site, you're going to be getting a call pretty quick from our service coordinator that it's going to show up. And it, and it means the client, the term I use, the client can actively participate in the well-being you know, and the management of their IT services if they know what's going on. And if you have quality notes and a witness and it's accurate, now I'll, I'll mention the service coordinator and the service manager have to do a QC on tickets when they see time entries and whatever review them and see that it's a quality statement that you know you re-educate your technicians what a quality Wittens is not just you know oh go go do the next thing on the checklist no no specifically complete the checklist and prep to deliver or whatever you know and and it is it's a it, it's a never-ending thing there's there's no doubt about that and it's not easy I don't want anybody to think like you just list these rules and it happens you know it it takes some work hmm. I'm a big fan of um, uh, getting things done GTD by David Allen which works uh, uh, on the, the whole methodology of you put the next action so it almost takes the decision-making power away uh, from you you don't need to think about what needs to be done next because it's right there in front of you in black and white uh, and the, the question I have to get asked or the statement I often hear is okay th this stuff doesn't affect me because I'm just a one-man band I'm just growing a business the answer I always give and uh, you know I'm, I'm hoping you guys agree with this is that even if you're a one-man band you're a single point of failure if you adopt this methodology up front that day when you are too ill to get up and to do something or the day when you get knocked over by a bus and end up in the hospital for six months it, you in theory should be able to hand across tickets and even hand across your whole business to somebody else to keep running what are your thoughts on that? Am I being melodramatic? Am I sim making it too simplistic? Carl, what's well, your thoughts? 
uh, let me just say, the, the, kind of related to that is, even if you're a one-man shop, you also have in your PSA a perfect history of what happened. So when a client comes to you and says, you know, we've never had an issue with this before, and you go look it up and you go, okay, this is the ninth ticket for that printer this year. So don't tell me that you haven't had this issue before. There's something going on and we got to take care of it. Or, you know, there's a certain person who, like, she always has viruses. Nobody else in the office ever has viruses. There might be something going on there. Um, we've even had cases where we would look back years to find out what happened. I mean, just recently, we had a discussion with a client who said, oh, you know, when we bought this small business server, you know, I, I think that it was a license that we should be able to keep and use forever and blah, blah, blah. And we're like, no, it specifically says right here, Software assurance, which means you bought it on, you know, and we, you know, we had to explain it to them, but it was in that ticket. Uh, everything's in the PSA. Uh, another case, uh, it's sort of interesting. So we have a client who, when we did their most recent uh, migration, we're fishing around, make sure that we got everything we need, and uh, and the the question was, why is there GFI? Why is that on this machine? We don't sell GFI. We don't like we don't have it installed anywhere. And you know, my brain's like a sieve, so I'm like, ah. I got absolutely nothing. So, so Mike goes and does the research and finds out five years before when Manny built that machine, the only way that they could get a signature at the bottom of every outgoing email to fit the needs of this specific client was to buy this little widget from GFI and install it. So yes, in fact, we do have GFI on exactly one client. It's never had a problem, so we've never looked at it in five years, but it was there and it was in the system. And if it wasn't in the system, we'd all be just second guessing each other about why that was there. Because Mike wasn't here when that machine was built, right? Yeah. And I wasn't involved when you know at that piece of, of the project. So even if you could, re even if you could have remembered it, like you said, right? <laughs> you know, um, and I'll I'll always point right from the very beginning is I don't care if you're a one man band or not. This is like you you know you touched on this uh, as well, Richard. That I'm going to have quantitative numbers to give you to say whether or not you're making money, and you're going to bring your hunches and your assumptions. And your and your checkbook with a red number, okay? And we'll see who can decide definitively whether you did or didn't make money. This is your widget. I don't. If again, if you were selling lemons and you didn't count your lemons, uh, how do you know that you made any money or that five five of them didn't get stolen and, or you know, you, you just don't know. But the the best part that you mentioned, Richard, about it is uh, having a backup for yourself. Let's say if you are a one man band, but more importantly. Um, the we we go on a tech call. Let's say if I was a one man shop and I go on a tech call and I have to escalate this to my continuum, my back office, my knock, or Microsoft or HP, I can actually package up my notes and send it to them and say, look, this is what I come up with and this is where I've dead ended. And you can have that conversation with them where you can give them a quick rundown, but they can go look at your really good notes and say, I see what you've done, I see where you went wrong, and this is the problem, let's go try this. Now, it's not that they couldn't figure it out without any of this, but it's that boost up that the more information you have, the easier it is. And you never know when something's going to decay on you. So it started out as a simple thing, and you didn't write down any notes. So two hours later, you've uninstalled and reinstalled this thing five times. Now you're going to call HP, and you've got to explain what all you've crowbarred in, you know, done, etc. And you don't even remember yourself. But the last, and I think the best is, in our, our business today, any MSP who's a single one-man shop wanted to go partner with somebody, or uh, be, build what I call an, an ex, a dynamically expanding and contracting workforce. They wanted to go use Odesk or Continuum or partner with another, another company. You've got to be able to communicate with them where these things are. And if you didn't ca take good notes in your tickets and you go send it to Continuum, I guarantee you Continuum has notes internal on their ticketing, and so does HP, and so does Microsoft, and anybody else that you would work with. So, in other words, how could you communicate effectively if you don't have good notes? And, of course, number one is still, you know, what gets measured gets weighed. You know, you, your time is your widget. Yeah. I, funny side story. I, I remember the, when the penny dropped for me personally about this documentation thing and, hey, there might be something in it. And, and, and Carl Manuel, you've probably both done the same thing. I Googled on an issue that I was experiencing, and my blog 
came up with the answer that I'd wrote <laughs> <laughs> six years earlier. I had no recollection of writing that blog post. I honestly didn't. And there it is telling me how to fix the problem that I'm having now. And that's when the penny dropped for me. And I thought, well, hold on a minute. I was writing that blog because I, I enjoy it. And that was an issue. And I thought I could help other people. If I'm documenting everything that I do on a day-to-day -day basis, I wonder how many of those uh, sort of penny drop moments I'll, I'll have in the future. And uh, interestingly, the, the service delivery manager from my old MSP uh, dropped me a note, a tweet on Twitter the other day. He was like, Thank goodness, uh, Top Blog's uh, article on such and such is still there, Windows uh, <laughs> Windows Seven, because we still refer to it to this day every time when we forget. But uh, right. yeah, it's 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 an interesting thing. The more you document, the more actually the more intellectual property you've got within your business. So, yeah. Did you did you Google Plus? Did you click on like Google Plus it uh, again? <laughs> oh, I always I always like my own articles, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're approaching we're approaching the end of our time here. So I, I'm going to jump to each of you in turn, and the, the, the focus of our uh, conversation today is, has been around getting time into Autotask, into a PSA system. But the overarching theme, of course, is making money or saving money. And I, I think hopefully we've given people a number of, of uh, reasons they can use a PSA tool to make or save money. But to jump to each of you to, to, to summarize up, is there anything we haven't covered or what would be the top one thing that you would encourage people to do with a PSA tool that that can easily make money or save money for them and I'm going to uh, I'm going to pick on you first of all Carl soon as you're having the most fun over there in Arizona I am having fun in Arizona so you know the the biggest advice is to to jump in and use it as much as you can because we didn't talk about uh, doing your billing in the PSA and you know there, there's so many aspects of it you know, when you're at a conference like this, uh, either at ConnectWise or at Autotask, and people talk about what they use, most people don't use probably more than 20% of what's in their PSA system. And the more you use it, the more money you will make. I mean, it, it is just the case. And it, I know it takes a long time because you got to ramp up. you got to learn the stuff, and then you got to figure out how to use it the best way and so forth. But, but you really need to dig into it and use the system. The more you live in that system, I think, the more consistent your processes will be, the more profitable you will be, the more you can hand work back and forth between people inside and outside the company, communicate with clients. You know, it's a snapshot in time for work that was done years ago. I mean, there's just so many benefits to it, but you have to first start with being dedicated to directing to use this tool that you've paid for. Yep. Very cool. Manuel. Um, I, uh, I actually wrote myself a couple notes because when you say that, you know, make money and save money, the first thing that occurs to me on saving money is whether you're a one-man shop, but more importantly, the more people you have in the system, the way to save money is if you log time, you can go back and look at this history. This is something I always tell clients. This You have to build best practices for your company, and how do you do that? You figure out what you're doing right or not, and I had mentioned it previously. Let's say you go and figure out that every time you install a PC or, or Tom installs a PC, it takes four hours, but every time Joe does it, he takes an hour. Well, now you need to get Tom and Joe together and figure out how to hammer out that process and, and re-indoctrinate Tom so that he's getting that efficiency down. You see where you're leaking time, a term Carl came up with years and years ago, okay? And, and you attack those points. That's how you save money. And... Uh, making money or I, I would say getting paid on time comes to uh, something we learned early on. If all of my time is up to date in real time every Friday, I can go do billing every weekend and send out billing for the time and material stuff every Monday and that's cash flow and cash is king, right? I mean, and that cash flow, it means everything to your little business and the smaller you are, the more important that is. Absolutely. Could not agree further uh, uh, more. I, I was trying to explain this to a, a client, an MSP client, just the other day. It, the longer you leave it to bill a client, the less they're feeling the pain of when you originally helped them out. And actually, if you leave it long enough, they won't even remember the problem whatsoever. Right. And that's right. when they start to query and nickel and dime you on invoices and uh, you know all sorts of things. If you're invoicing as quickly as possible with an accurate record, you're much more likely to, to, um, to get that invoice paid quickly, aren't you, I think? So. Yeah, 90 days later, there's no pain. <laughs> But, but, uh, but if you listen to what we're telling you, 90 days later, there's quality notes right that completely clearly explain what we did for you so but you can forget but you know what we got it pretty much we got it we got a you know uh, uh, you know days and days worth of notes 
you know, so. So I think we could talk about this for another 90 minutes <laughs> or thereabouts. We could talk about it. It's a subject we're all clearly very passionate about. So probably a request to, to anybody who's watching this video. If you found this of value, please, please feedback to us on, on Twitter, on Google, on Facebook. Drop us an email. Let us know if you found it of value and because uh, I think the three of us would be happy to get together again and, uh, and talk along similar lines. So if anybody does want to reach out to us, um, if I just take it in turns, if we, uh, Carl, if we go to you, how do people find you online? Where's your blog? How can they find you on Twitter? What's your email address? Fax number, yeah. telex. Yeah, I think the thing here is, is it says uh, Small Biz Thoughts. So um, smallbizthoughts.com and, and blog.smallbizthoughts.com. That gets you kind of connected with me. My email is carlp, K-A-R-L-P, at smallbizthoughts.com. Or if it's easier to remember, greatlittlebook.com. Uh, they both go to the same place. And uh, I just do encourage people, contact us if you have a topic that you would like us to talk about again, because I'm having fun here. So. Well, well. Yeah, I would say I made it a little bit easier to uh, to find me if um, if you can spell my name right, right? Uh, my email address is manual at palachuk.com. And on all social media, I am basically at Manuel Palachuk for Twitter, slash Manuel Palachuk for LinkedIn, slash Manuel Palachuk for Facebook, Manuel Palachuk for Skype. So... Um, Again, if you can spell my name correctly, there, there's no way you can't find me and, and uh, my website and everything else. And, and by all means, I encourage anybody that's listening to this, uh, you pick a subject that, that uh, you're interested in or you think that we can help you with, I would love to, to do this again. Um, and it's true, we could spend hours just on the same subject because it's, it's so important, but much more to cover. So I'm going to give a little plug here as well, mainly because I'm one of the speakers, um, <laughs> but also because if you've got value from uh, watching this here today, um, Carl has been very, very giving of his time with the in industry for, for more years than I can count. He's somebody that I've uh, really looked up for, to for, for the longest amount of time. And Carl's actually putting together uh, the SMB online conference, Carl, in a couple of weeks' time. We're a couple of weeks away from it now, aren't we? Uh, perhaps yeah. you could give details. Sure. So the, the conference, you can go to smbonlineconference.com. I made that very easy. Uh, and uh, just look in there. The, the price is pretty reasonable, I think, for 15 hours of education. It's all online. It's over three days. And so go there. If you use the code SECRET100, S-E-C-R-E-T-100, Secret 100 gets you an additional $100 off of your registration. So I encourage anybody to, who's interested to go check that out. We also have uh, videos and interviews with uh, most of the speakers. More are coming up very soon this week. But um, you know, get a sense of what's going on. It really is three days on the entire theme of revising your business. You know, Pushing the reset button. We're coming out of this recession, we hope. And uh, so, so a lot's changed. It's amazing what's changed in the last five years. And so, you know, if you were going to retool today, what would you make your business look like? And so we've got, you know, like say, 15 hours of education on that theme. And you two are uh, speakers at the event, and I greatly appreciate your participation with that. And uh, I'm looking forward to a really great event, three days at the end of this month. Fantastic. Looking forward to it. I was an attendee at last year's conference, Carl, and it was um, phenomenal value for the price as well. So, um, yeah, hugely encourage that. With the, the selly selly bit uh, done now, I think we'll need to wrap up, guys. Um, uh, a quick, if anybody wants to reach out to me and get in touch, um, you can find me at www.tublog.co.uk um, for news and advice for MSPs and IT solution providers. I'm at Tublog, T U B B L O G, on Twitter. You can also find me on Google. Plus, uh, you can find me. I'm scattered all over the internet. Anywhere. Just, uh, just, just, uh, just do a Google search on you, and you'll find me, gentlemen. It's been my absolute pleasure. I've had such a good time uh, recording this. And I think we should do it again. Uh, Carl, Manuel, thank you very much for your time today. Very much thank appreciate it. Thank you, Richard. For organizing it.